Yeah, we're back. Um, do I look different today? I can't quite tell because these things just aren't quite as sharp as they usually are because I usually have my glasses and for whatever reason, they weren't a part of my ensemble. And um, I'm kind of just really working hard on focusing at things so that I can see what I'm doing, what I'm reading, and what things say. Fortunately for us, this is not going to be a hindrance because we're going to be looking at shapes. And these shapes are just going to be big and lovely. And uh, even an old guy like me is going to be able to see them and to and work with them. Um, those little points, those little tiny points, however, that might be an issue. We'll see. Um, okay, shapes. Is this like the best moment ever? I don't know. Um, it's Is it a game changer? No, not really, but it's super helpful and will be critical for a lot of the work and the design work that you do moving forward. So far, all of the work that we've been doing has been involving just paths or fills that we have been creating via the pencil or the pen tool. So um, we're going to take a look at Illustrator's uh, shapes. And the shapes uh, are located under, um, usually the default one is the rectangle. I was going through them. Mine was on the line. But uh, so you've got your, your selection tool, your direct selection tool, your pen tool, and then your curvature tool, and then the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool is going to draw whatever you have set up for your fill and your stroke. Um, so it could be either. I'm just going to work with fills right now since that's sort of like the theme. Um, and if I was to draw a rectangle, it's just clicking and dragging. Right? It's as easy as that. I haven't let go yet. Whoa. That's one thing that you have to get used to about Illustrator. I have not let go yet. Um, so I can make my rectangle super tall and slim, or I can make it very wide and, and flat or I could hold down the shift key and keep it constrained as a perfect square. So those are things you should just, you know, if you haven't done it before, practice. It's totally fine. While I am still holding down on my stylus or my mouse or trackpad, ah, <laughs> you can press the space bar and then put it somewhere without resizing it. So maybe I want it over there. Maybe I decide I don't, and I'll put it over here. So this is before I have ever even let go of my, of my, on this case, stylus and the graphics tablet. If you're using a mouse uh, or trackpad, uh, you're still holding your finger down throughout all of this. So you can find the perfect spot for it, let go of the space bar, and then maybe resize it or whatever. So very simple. You're dragging and drawing a box is what this really looks like. I'm going to hit delete. There's another way to draw one of these. And this is this is going to be really helpful as you move along with design work. And that is by drawing, holding down your option or alt key. And that would mean that you're drawing out from the center. So now I'm drawing out from the center. I'm holding down my option key or my alt key and it's allowing me to draw basically symmetrically in the opposite direction if i hold down shift while i'm doing that come on now it'll keep it constrained as a perfect square so i still have my fingers on option and shift now what if i put my thumb on the space bar whoa i can move it over here and now when I let go of the space bar, then I can, ah, oh, there it goes again. I can zoom out or in and out, not really zooming, just changing the scale from the center point. So the option key is the drawing from the center. It's, I, I find it most helpful for whatever reason. I do a lot of design that has circles in it and I love drawing from the center out. Um, Cause it's hard to figure out exactly where your center is going to be on a circle if you don't hold down the option because it starts from your basically your x and y 
uh, coordinate and then goes positive in both directions. I'm going to hit delete and get rid of that. So that is the rectangle. Actually, I'll bring one back on. This time I'll just draw a rectangle. I won't worry about holding down any keys. I'm just going to make a rectangle. So then we look and see what the result is. The result is a rectangle that has these um, four corners, and each of those corners is a point that is editable. And then inside those corners is this little circle, and the circle is the rounded nature of that corner. So I could just go right in without even changing my tool, leaving it on the polygon tool. I could go right to one of those circles and drag that circle in or out, you know, and try to find my happy spot for what a rounded rectangle looks like or a pill or something. So maybe you, you don't want something that's so harsh. You want to be a little kind of a little soft, a little more forgiving. Um, then you would change that, um, that corner point or you just leave it out where it is and you have a nice sharp edged polygon. What if you want to just do one? Well, that's when you do need another tool and that would be the direct selection tool. It's a good habit to click off of the shape and then back on the one corner or point that you want to change. So you can see that I just selected this top left point. I have one circle for the roundedness of that one and you don't see it anywhere else. So if I take that and I, I could have a whole new shape made that has three sharp corners, one rounded one. Maybe this is for a logo or it's for a lower third graphic for a, a, a film or something like that. Um, or it's just kind of the way you're trying to design something, right? So that one point is accessible every time you click on a corner with the direct selection tool. So I could sort of do like a neat um, counter symmetrical uh, curved piece where I have sharp corners and then rounded corners. You're starting to see that you'll you'll find this design um, like all over and all kinds of uh, logo work and whatnot. Okay, so that's how you round those corners. I'm going to delete that. Ironically, oh, they got rid of it. There used to be a tool here that was the rounded rectangle tool. Good thing, because it was just too much. Um, so now I have the ellipse tool. The ellipse tool is circular in nature. So if I click and drag, I'm dragging from the, the top left corner and making an ellipse, right? So I can make it long, tall, or I can hold down that shift key and keep it a perfect circle. Again, I can use my space bar and put it where I want and then continue to draw. Likewise, if I were to draw from uh, the center using my Option or Alt key, it'll draw out from the center. So no longer am I kind of constrained to that top left corner. I can hold down Shift as well and keep it to be a perfect circle, holding down both those keys. Ah! And then a thumb on the space bar allows you to move it to wherever you might want it. Okay, so that's your ellipse. Your ellipse also just has four points, just like your square. Come on, oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. <laughs> I always, I've been doing this lately. I get confused. So if I were to click off and back on, I do have access to those points um, to manipulate them. So now I've got something that could be like interpreted as a bowl or a big smile. Um, these are, these are things that, again, you should just play with and be like, what happens? Oh, look, I crossed paths. And you end up having a flip. Sometimes that's cool. Other times it's kind of a, a bummer. Now it kind of almost looks like a duck bill or a skater hat or something. It's so always, I always love just dragging around because it's like animating, but it's not. It's an illustration. So um, now it's a guitar pick. Ooh, that's fun. So I'm going to get my, my selection tool. Pull that back up. Maybe I'll scale it down just a smidge and then get my direct selection tool. And I can work on bringing ah, these points in a little bit. You know, bam, guitar pick. Or 
if I use my anchor point editing tool, I could just make it sharp. And now I've got like um, a location on a map. Just made it myself. All right, so those are the little things you can do to something as simple as an ellipse. We get a little more complicated when you jump into the polygon tool. The polygon tool is a multi-sided uh, shape. So if I just draw it right off the bat, well, I was already messing with it. It should be five, hey, uh, six. I gotta be such a jerk. Um, that's still a six-sided, so whatever. What I was doing is while I'm still drawing this, I have not let go yet. It's still in like the world before I decide what I want. If I hit my arrow keys up or down, I can change the amount of sides on that polygon. So there's a triangle. That's the lowest you can get. And it's really sensitive. Why is it so sensitive? There's like a 12 sided thing. Or I can keep going, keep going, keep going. Eventually I have a circle. Why would I do that? I have an ellipse tool. So um, nice to know that those things are there. The other thing to note would be that um, there are other Adobe apps. See, like I just can't stop. It's like, whoa, now I'm in motion graphics land. There are other Adobe apps that allow you to do this with a polygon tool that have the up and the down for changing your, your polygon count size. But they also have the left and the right, which allow you to change sort of the curvature nature of things. Illustrator doesn't do that. And I'm like, you're all Adobe people. Why don't you just communicate across all platforms, make that consistent? I don't know. Um, actually, I do know. I talked to a programmer from After Effects who I brought up a question like this, similar to like, why does Photoshop have this? And then After Effects has the same tool, but it doesn't behave the same way. And he goes, the Photoshop people hate the After Effects people and we don't talk. I was like, well, that's not healthy. So what if I did want to change things like the curvature of it? I would just get my um, my anchor point tool and then I could change the nature of those points. You didn't do it. There we go. So that's a reversal. There's a positive. So now I've got like a you know cool little tombstone sort of thing. Um, or I could just go to all of them and do the same deal. Try to figure out if I can match it. The other thing would be to, it's pleasant, um, back out. You can see that um, with my selection tool, it gives me those curvature handles where I could change all of them at the same time, or I could use the direct selection tool and just do one, like such, kind of cool. All right, so that's what you can expect with the polygon tool. By. And then the last one, oh, it's not the last one, the star tool is similar in a way in which you can drag and draw a star. If you hit up on your arrows, you can add more points or fewer points, which is kind of cool. Like that's a really great effect. I've used this a bunch of times in my design. The other thing is you can hold down command and that'll make your the outer radius longer or where are you if i hold down option it'll allow me to change the scale of the inner radius and then i can do a combination again with my control sorry command key you know or like just kind of flying in and out of this stuff um so you can find a way to get the exact like there's like the Mattel that's what I always think of the Mattel logo or like the thing that was on fresh meat <laughs> 25 cents fresh meat so playing with a star tool it's more than a star you can add a lot of points and play with that inner and outer radius and then the last one is a line segment tool so so far we've created these shapes they've all been fills a line does not um, honor fills it's strictly a stroke tool so i would want to make sure that i think about that in advance and change my fill to be a red slash saying no fill and then play with you know maybe the color of my stroke so now if i were to just drag and draw i get a line right so this is just a stroke straight line two points um, you could do this with a pen tool 
but maybe there's times when it's just quicker to use the, the line tool. I'm going to hit undo and get rid of that. If I draw and hold down shift, it keeps it constrained to 45 degree increments. So there's a horizontal, there's a 45 angle, there's a vertical one. All right. So this being a stroke means I can go to my properties panel and increase the stroke weight if I wanted to. And then I can get into fun stuff where I go into the stroke and say, you've got a rounded uh, cap and I want you to be a dashed line. This is going to be maybe like 30 by 30. Now it's going to be bigger than that. 50. Yeah, sure. So there's my dotted line. I had to increase the, um, the dash and gap just because of the intensity of the stroke weight. That's, they're all, they, they depend on each other. What else could I do? I could add an arrowhead. So this is how you add arrowheads to a stroke. Pay attention, this is on your exam. I just told you, right here, arrowheads in a movie. I can change my arrowhead to be uh, on the front or on the back side, right? So you can change the direction or you can just flip it. All right, that's what that's doing. Um, there are some other cool ones in here, like there's the back end, and then you can put the front end on, so you have like an actual arrow. Um, I'm going to change those out. Done. This one, I'm going to look through and say, what else there? What else you got? Oh, look at that. Fun. It's a scissor arrowhead, which brings me right to like the coupon thing, like, you know, perforated edge, cut here or rip here or whatever. Um, and you didn't have to design the scissors. So they do have some kind of fun little elements in there. I love the pointed finger. That's pretty great. Doesn't really work with a dotted line, but you, just, you can just get rid of that and say, bam. And then probably a butt cap. So um, there are quite a few things you can do with the line tool. Um, it's, it's exactly what you can do if you were making a path with the pen or the pencil. Um, only you just get, you have two points. You can always add points after that, but. Um, so that concludes our shapes. Play with them, have some fun, experiment, just, just get comfortable with it because you're gonna need these as we go down the path of logo creation and doing some layout work, um, you know, some character design stuff. So um, hope that was helpful and play and have fun.